Hi everybody, this is Julian from AWS and in this video I would like to introduce you to a new SageMaker capability that was launched yesterday and I mean SageMaker Data Wrangler. Uh, that's going to help you hopefully a lot with data preparation in the early phase of your machine learning project. Okay, so let's get to work. Obviously, first you need to uh, have an AWS account, uh, go to the SageMaker console once you've uh, created your account, and go to SageMaker Studio, create a user, uh, only takes a minute, and then you can open Studio directly. Okay, you can do all of this in five minutes. Now, uh, the one place you want to go is this, this new icon on the left, right? And uh, we'll look at these other new capabilities in, in other videos. Now we want to look at Data Wrangler. Okay, so just click on New Flow. All right, uh, and uh, we can give it a name because Untitled feels a little generic. And uh, okay, let's call this Wrangler Demo. All right, and we have to provide some data, right? So. I've got a, a simple data set. I'm going to use the Titanic uh, survival uh, passenger survival data set, which uh, I'm sure you've seen before. If not, don't worry, it's super simple. And, uh, and I copied it in one of my S3 buckets. So I'm going to say, hey, uh, I want to import from S3. So just click on S3. And don't worry, the first time you do this, it's firing up the, the data wrangler image in studio. It could take a few minutes. So just hang in there. It's going to show up. And let's find my bucket. There's too much stuff here I need to clean up. Okay. And yeah, Titanic. Okay, here it is. Right. And I can close this. We don't need it anymore. Okay. So as I select it, I see a preview just to make sure this is the right data. Uh, I don't want sampling, I want the full data set. And you can import CSV or Parquet data, as you can see here. All right, so let's import this. And I'm presented with this uh, uh, graphical view. And uh, as we add um, preparation steps, of course, we, they will be reflected here, okay? So the first thing we probably wanna do is to check that the data types are correct for each column, that uh, Data Wrangler got it right. Okay, so we can check this. Again, it's a simple data set. There shouldn't be any issue here. Okay, so we can see the columns here. And they look pretty good to me, right? Yep. Okay, so I don't want to change anything. If I wanted to, obviously, I would just uh, change one of those values here and, and preview and apply. But... But for now, you know, it's all good. I don't need to do anything else here. Okay. So I can go back to my analyze view and it's probably the next thing you want to do is uh, visualize data, right? Understand what's in there. So let's add an analysis. Uh, and of course we can build histograms and scatter plots. Uh, okay, table summary is probably a good place to start, right? Um, basic stats on on our different columns okay uh, so we could uh, we could save this okay create and now we save this visualization and uh, and of course we can uh, we can see it anytime we want okay okay let's do another one maybe we can see uh, age distribution passengers and let's call them by passenger class and okay see who survived right so it looks like yes again if you are in third class and between 10 and 40 you know your survival odds weren't that good right Okay, let's we can save this one as well. Uh, so let's call it age uh, versus survived. All right, so you can you see you can, you can easily uh, you can easily create your uh, your visualizations like that. 
Okay, so once you have a better sense of what the data looks like, you can start preparing it and we can start adding transforms. Okay, so we see here a, a long list of built-in transforms, uh, encoding categorical variables, managing columns, and more, right? So let's uh, try and do a few things here. So maybe first I want to drop the name column, right? So I don't want, I don't need names here. Okay, so I can preview the change. Yes, add it. Okay. Um, now maybe I want to uh, one hot encode the passenger class, which is really a categorical variable and not a not a an ordinal variable. So let's do this. So encode categorical p class and I want to do one hot encode. Okay. And I don't want the vector style, I want the column style. Okay, and I can give some kind of prefix here. Okay. Yeah, I forgot to select the input column. <laughs> okay, so one not encode P class, one not encode as columns, and here's the prefix. Okay, I can preview, and I see my P class one two three one not encoded columns. Okay, good. I want to keep this, and I probably want to drop the original P class column now. No need to keep that around. So let's drop P class preview. Yep, add. Okay, so you get the idea, right? And if you have custom um, uh, transforms, you can add your own code here in PySpark pandas or PySpark PySpark or PySpark SQL. Okay, super simple. And you can have uh, custom formulas uh, again using Spark sequence. Okay, uh, what else do I want to do? Probably I want to move the label to the first column. That's one thing XJBoost expects. So let's move that column. Okay, move, move to start, and please move the label. Survived. Preview. Okay, add. So you get the ID, uh, you can feel free and, and explore all of these and again, use your own. Um, and now we see our pipeline of preparation steps, okay? And you could create multiple groups of steps if you wanted to do data cleaning and feature engineering, and keep everything organized, uh, if you wanted uh, um, additional sources, etc., etc. okay? You could do that. All right, so, now, of course, we could delete steps, right? Uh, and, and revert them if we wanted. So now, now let's say we're happy with this and we'd like to see, well, is this, you know, how would this actually perform, right? Uh, so we could go back to analysis and there's this really cool thing called quick model um, where I can train a model uh, right in there. So the label is survived, and uh, and this is training immediately uh, a model on uh, on the pre-processed data. Okay, so this is really nice because you can see um, the impact of your data preparation steps. Okay, uh, so I can see this is a binary classification problem. So I get an F1 score 0.718, which is okay. Uh, I guess we could. Uh, it could do better with a little more processing. And I see feature importance. Uh, so sex is important. Uh, cabin is important. I would need to understand what's in there. Uh, being a first class passenger is important, etc., etc. Right. So by running this again and again, uh, you can see uh, and you saw, you know, it really took a few seconds. You can see if your transforms are actually helping your uh, your model or not. Okay. So once you've done this a few times and once you're happy with the accuracy, 
then of course you want to export your uh, data processing steps and use them with your own code. And this is super simple. Just go to export. Um, you can select the steps that you want to export. Okay, just like that. Click on export step and you get different options. Uh, you can export this to Python code. So let's do this. And you see Python code ready to run, uh, ready to be integrated in your machine learning project. And, uh, and you can, you know, you can rest assured this is the exact same thing that you've done interactively. So you don't need to recode this. Um, you don't need to replicate this. You can just run this code and it's going to do exactly what, uh, what you've done in the UI. Okay, so that's one export option. We can also export to um, a data wrangler job. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, we're not going to run it. And this is basically uh, a SageMaker processing job. Okay, so it's a batch job uh, that will apply those transforms to your data set. Okay, so we could, we could run this automatically and and just process the data and get a, a processed version of the data set in S3. Okay, so that's option two. Um, option three is to create a SageMaker pipeline. That's another uh, capability that was announced yesterday and I'll cover this is in another video. So here you can create a SageMaker pipeline that will uh, prepare and uh, uh, automatically uh, run all those transforms okay create a workflow etc etc right so if you want to automate this and replicate it again and again well you can just use SageMaker pipeline for that and the last option is to export this to another notebook that will push your engineered features to SageMaker feature store which is another capability that we announced yesterday. And I, again, I will cover this in another video. And I will actually use this same example for a continuity. Okay. So as you can see, it's really, really simple to explore your data sets interactively. You get a long list of built-in transforms. You can add your own. Uh, and once you can evaluate their, accu their accuracy with the quick model um, feature, and once you're happy, you can export this in a, in a number of different ways to, uh, to basically replicate the exact steps in your machine learning project. And um, whether it's Python code or a SageMaker processing job or, um, or a SageMaker pipelines, uh, pipeline or a feature store, if you want to push those features and, uh, and keep using them or maybe for other teams to use as well, okay? So that's pretty much the, uh, the whirlwind tour of uh, Data Wrangler. Again, uh, it's um, available in all SageMaker regions today. And um, you know, go try it and let me know what you think. Let me know what's missing. Uh, send me your feedback. I'm more than happy to, uh, to read this and answer your questions. Thank you.